Welcome to Digital Marketing Intelligence for Shopify Ask the Experts. Our weekly podcast and video show offers Shopify's ecosystem of brand owners, store developers, app providers, investors, and marketing agencies, insights from case studies and discussions with marketing and e-commerce experts. Grow faster with tips, tricks, and proven strategies, and learn what's new in e-commerce digital marketing for 2022 and beyond. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Digital Marketing Intelligence for Shopify Ask the Experts. I'm Marissa Morgan. I'm your show host. I'm also the Director of Business Development here at Engage. On behalf of myself and the entire team at Engage, I want to welcome you to today's episode. Episode 87, we're talking to a guest who is going to teach us how to generate more than $2 million a year in sales from organic traffic. Our guest is a proven SEO expert and the CEO of a highly successful e-commerce brand. I'll introduce you to our guest and we'll learn more about his interesting and very active brand in just a moment. Before I do that though, of course, a quick word from our sponsor, Engage. Before we get started, I wanna share that we're very excited to have just launched our new app, SMS Messaging for Shopify stores, just this past May of 2022. You can check out our app at www.engage.com where you can not only try out our app, with a free demo, you can put any US mobile phone number into that website and get a free trial of how that app actually works. But you can also sign up for a 30 day free trial, which will include 500 free SMS messages to take for a test drive. Now, if you are a Shopify store owner and you're not using SMS messaging, you're missing out on an opportunity to build your customer lists and build them faster, increase sales, save time with automations and personalized campaigns that target your prospect customers where they are. And of course, we all know that is on their cellular devices. So go to www.ngagge.com after today's show to find out more about the Engage SMS for Shopify app. This brand new, take it for a free 30 day test drive. Okay, without further ado, it is time for me to introduce you to our guest. Our guest today is joining us from Italy. However, he is a very successful CEO of a US based company, and his name is John Murphy. If you don't know who John is, you need to. He is not only living right now in Italy, but he's got an Irish background, U.S.-based company, and he's been doing drop shipping since 2017. What is his company, you might ask? Well, it's a very unique one, a little bit of a niche company. He sells electric bikes to hunters. We'll find out more about that from the man himself in just a moment. But John's forte is SEO. And while he claims he is not a guru and that what he teaches is not rocket science, every single e-commerce store owner he chats with tells him that they have no idea how to get organic traffic. So what he has created is a way for people to understand that solution. Today, we're going to hear more about his e-bike brand and story, and we're going to hear about how before his uh, kind of epiphany, his SEO epiphany, he was basically in the low six figures of revenue every year. Now he's in the multiple seven figure range with most of his traffic coming through organic traffic sites. I'm excited to hear more about that. And we're also going to learn about his e-commerce course. It's called Ecom SEO Formula. And we can find out more about that at ecomseoformula.com. Fun fact about John. Sometimes he gets up awful early and it's not to work out himself, but sometimes he gets up at four in the morning to watch the mixed martial arts UFC fights that are happening in Vegas, which obviously is so many time zones away from Italy. So he's a big fan of mixed martial arts. And today, if you're watching our video version, you'll see him and I are so clued in and on the same page because we're both we both happen to be wearing blue. So maybe you have a little bit of a telepathic uh psychic ability as well. So welcome to the show, John. It's so exciting to have you here. And we're all very excited to hear how to grow our sales with organic traffic. You've had a lot of luck with that. So tell us a little bit about your e-bike brand. How are you selling it to hunters? Where did this, you know, kind of need come up and what has made your brand so successful? 
Hi, Marissa. Well, thanks for having me. Um, well, uh, it's true. I do sell e-bikes to hunters, which seems very, very uh, obscure. Um, however, there are 16 million registered hunters in the US, so it's not that small. Um, I, I, got, I started selling to hunters because when I decided to start drop shipping e-bikes in the US, I thought I was the first person to have that idea. And it turns out um, there were a lot of us. We all had the same idea at the same time. So uh, a lot of the stores that were selling the same products at the same price, uh, it kind of became very similar. A, a lot of brands all looking very similar and selling the same products. And there was nothing special about any of us. So I decided to try to narrow down, go, go super niche. And the, the hunter, uh, let's say demographic, just made a lot of sense. It ticked a lot of boxes. And then the further I went down that path, the more now the website looks more like a hunting website than it does an e-bike store. It's funny you say that because when I was looking on your LinkedIn, and I'll pop it up actually here, when I was checking you out on LinkedIn, even just the logo that I see behind your picture and the colors, kind of that camo color, you're right. That does make me think of kind of that hunting brand, that hunting vibe. Very yeah. interesting. Well, I'm excited you're here today because you're going to help us learn how to generate, we say, two, two, two plus million dollars in sales with organic traffic. And to do that, you put together a really nice show outline for us. We're going to talk about how to create content that Google wants to rank on page one. We all know that if you're not on page one, you may not ever get looked at. So I think this is such an interesting thing that you're going to share with us. I'm excited to hear how we're going to do that. You're also going to talk about how the Dream 100 process can reveal hundreds of potential collaborations. And you're going to talk about how to build an affiliate army that will help you dominate your niche. And that is something you're doing in the e-bike hunting world. So of all people to share that info with us, I trust everything you're going to share with us today. Let's start with this idea of how do we create the content that Google wants on their first page because most people don't scroll past that first page yeah true there is um there's a um, affiliate marketer joke that says uh well, where does the affiliate marketer hide the dead body on page two of google because if you're not if you're not on page one you won't be found um and it's very true because the top 10 results on page one get all of the search volume nobody usually clicks through so uh you need to you need to be able to get at the top of page one, not even at the bottom of page one, just at the top of page one is where all the traffic is. So like the top two results get about 50% of all of the, the clicks uh, on uh, in search. So even if you're on page one, you know, the, the higher, the better. And the like, it's a really, it's really not a complicated process. If you want to see what, what Google wants to rank on page one, you just go to page one and, and look what, look what results come up. Basically, like for example, in, uh, if I want to get my uh, e-bike hunting niche on the top of page one, I, I enter a search term that my customers might be looking for, like e-bike for hunting or electric hunting bike for sale or something like that. And I see what comes up because if the results that are on the top of page one, it's because Google has already crawled those websites. It understands the relevancy of that content for the search term I, I entered and it deemed it the best. So then you just basically record what, what, what came up on page one and then just go down the rabbit hole of researching what's on that page. So click through to the results, see what's on the page, how, how much content is are on those pages? How helpful is it? Are there, uh, what, what type of content is it? Is it a buyer's guide? Is it just a list of products like top X for Y, like top 10 e-bikes? Um, or is it more of a like a more of an informational piece where it's like what is an e-bike for hunting and then there's a bunch of you know uh, commonly like misconceptions about the the product or the niche and whatever type of content seems to be um, regular in those results uh, that's usually because that's what Google finds is the most relevant for those sort of buyer intent keywords so. You have an idea by just looking at page one, you have an idea of what Google deems uh, page one worthy. So what's relevant, what type of well, what type of content is relevant, how long the content is. So usually like word count 
is also important um and uh what what like how how informational is the content how deep of a of a, of 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 information goes into that content and then once you once you recognize what uh, what those what those details are you just then go and create content that's more helpful more useful and and if you can keep it relevant even longer so a larger word count so you're basically just doing what already works but making it bigger and better so uh, google will start to recognize that uh, we've got an even better piece of content that we already like um so you're not trying to reinvent the wheel you're just trying to see what works and then do it better well you're taking my job and making it easier i was just going to sum up what you've said and said if it's not broken don't fix it just exactly <laughs> take it and add a little glitter make it a little bit better and then Google is more likely to recognize. And that's just through Google's own formulas and algorithms and you know word uh, recognition software and all those things. That's just through Google's own um, measurements and, and tools, right? That they're able to determine what is a good match. And, yeah. and that's just and on Google's side, right? Yeah, and so Google will, you know, crawl all of the you know, all of all of the web pages on the internet and figure out what they'll try to make a determination of what the content is what what it's about how relevant it is and then depending on when somebody comes along and, and you know enters the search term they have a list of potential websites that could fit the criteria so there are certain things you can do in the content technically uh, to help google understand that even better and that's just by being very clear uh, using specific type of uh what are called like headings like h1 tags h2 tags um which which give a little bit more um relevancy to the words so for example uh, imagine like h1 would be like the the title okay the title of the piece and then h2 tags heading twos and heading threes are the uh what you would use for like uh chapter titles or subheadings and if the keywords are in those subheadings as well, um, Google, when it's crawling, it first of all crawls the, all of those heading tags to see you know, what the titles are because it can then make a determination of what the content is about. Uh, so by, by strategically using your keywords in a way that makes it easier for Google to understand what your content's about, you're just making it easier for Google to choose your content. Obviously, it still needs to be very good and useful to the to the customer that's actually reading it, uh, because Google have become very, very good at understanding uh, content and concepts and the meaning behind even uh, different variations of saying the same thing. So, um, so yeah. So basically, you just you can just try to improve your chances of Google understanding what your content is about. One very good thing to do is um google really likes to find answers to questions because the more questions you answer on a given topic the more of a topical authority you appear to be or your website appears to be and a very good way to display topical authority would be to actually just an answer questions and you can actually have like a paragraph or a section in your long form content kind of like an faq so if you want to answer a question, you can quite easily just write out the question and, and it could be a section like if it's um, most commonly asked questions about X, Y, Z, and then you ask the question and then you answer the question. So that has a couple of benefits because not only do you you, you get to use the keyword both in the question and the answer, mm -hmm. uh, you, your answers can be taken by Google and produced as an answer when somebody asks those questions in Google. So maybe somebody's not typing in what's the best e-bike for hunting, but they might say, how long does an e-bike battery last before discharging or before running out of power or something? But if I've answered that question in my piece of content, Google could take that snippet of content and answer it and then link to my content. So yes. uh, there, there, are just, there are lots of ways of uh, creating an environment for Google to really like your content. Whether it's by it's being helpful, making Google making it easy for Google to understand what your content is about, and then answering questions as well. 
as a consumer, the answering questions insight that you just shared really is interesting to me because so many times I've put a question into Google and that's exactly what has happened. I've gotten my question answered and it's literally my question answered almost in verbatim, you know, phrased that way. And then there's an answer and then it gives me like three quarters of the answer. And mm. then I'm forced to click on the web page link that Google is telling me that answer is located at. And that is probably a web page that I may not have ever, ever clicked on otherwise. So I think that's a brilliant way to generate more organic traffic, especially yeah. if your product is very niche. Like you said, it makes sense. If you're giving more information and you're being helpful, Google is going to recognize that because people are going to have questions all the time. Yeah. And just by answering, answering those questions in the content, you're appearing not only for the search term, but for the questions as well. So it just gives you more opportunities to show up in the results and, and, and get more traffic. So that's just a couple of the ways that you can nurture the content to be uh, very much what Google wants. Awesome. Great insights. Great insights indeed. Let's talk about this next uh, insight you want to share with us. This idea of the dream 100 as a way to reveal hundreds of potential collaborations. What is dream 100 referred to? So the dream 100 uh, process is, it's been around for a while, but it, it, um, it kind of became famous again after Russell Brunson released a book, I think it was called .com Secrets or .com Experts. It's one of his big uh, e-commerce uh, strategy books. And he goes into detail about um, what the Dream 100 is. And that's where I learned about it. And that's where I started really applying it to e-commerce. And it's basically a content, it's a concept of just creating a list of hypothetically 100, but it can be as long as you want of your uh, most ideal people you would like to collaborate with in order to enhance your your store or your business. So like, for example, it could be uh, if you have a, like a, um, a sports brand and you wanna work with influencers, you would just go down the rabbit hole of finding uh, your dream 100 influencers. And it's basically just a long list of all of these people uh all these people or websites and their contact information and then once you have identified all those people then you go and you can go to approach them i did i did take the dream 100 and sort of change it for my for my benefits because once you once you realize that you can start doing that type of research there are lots of other things that you can do with it as well so like with, with my idea of getting organic traffic um my concept was um who's in the e-bike space and who's in the hunting space, right? The, those niches. So I would look for websites and I would look for websites for it. Let's like, if we stick to hunting, just to keep it simple, I would look for blogs in the hunting niche. And then I would, I would uh, cross check with a few criteria that I would like to see. So for example, I would like to see if, um, if they have got a good domain rating, like a good domain authority, they get lots of traffic. If they do, I would like to collaborate with them in some way, maybe like write a guest post to get a backlink from their website. Uh, if they are, if I, see, if I land on their website while I'm doing this process and I see that they are aggressively trying to get my email through an offer or through a pop-up, uh, I can assume that they have a strong and active email list and that they're gathering emails because they, they apply email marketing. And if they do, their, their audience are hunters. And I would like to get in front of their email audience. So I might out, reach out to them and suggest that um, I give an offer to their email list as exclusive for their email list. And uh, so I would then get like, get on like their next email newsletter. I'm maybe like, I'm just part, I get in, get, get mentioned in their email as, John from eBay Generation is offering just for our email list, uh, I don't know, five percent off or two hundred and fifty dollars or whatever, whatever the, you know the, the 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 benefit is or the offer is. Uh, and what happens is then if if they've got a, a big email list of maybe ten thousand people, uh, some of those will come to my website for the first time that didn't know me. People find out who I am, find out about the store. And then if I'm if I'm clever at all and I've got Facebook pixels or 
email captures on the store or Google ads or something like that, I can then retarget them later. So I'm just bringing more people into my ecosystem that way. Um, another another process uh, inside the Dream 100 would be I would look out for uh, websites that are, let's say, that, that are, mm, let's see if they are, uh, so if they're capturing email, if they're good for uh, blog posts, and then um, let's say if they, there may be some sort of a, maybe some sort of a, an exchange that we can do. So they get, they can, they can maybe promote some of my products or I could um, create some sort of an upsell for something that they're interested in too. So there could be some sort of a cross promotional arrangement mm -hmm. that we could do. Mm -hmm. These are really great insights because if you think about it, tapping into somebody else's email list or their, you know, ecosystem of prospects, not only will make that person look like a superstar, right? In the eyes of that consumer, like, hey, wow, like just because, you know, this person helps me with this product, now I'm going to get this special discount on this other product, which really fits my needs as well. Like, they almost look like a referral superstar in a sense, but then obviously also you reap the benefits of getting fresh eyes on your website, on your product, on your brand. And we all know that at the end of the day, you know, once you have a, a customer, it's always less expensive to keep the customer. And obviously right. getting a new customer can be very pricey, but if you are smart in the way that you're doing it and not just only relying on paid ads, then I think that your chances of coming ahead with a lot more prospects is there. You've really shared a, a very cost, I think, effective way to get that organic traffic as well. Yeah, when, um, when you're trying not to or you can't run uh, paid, paid mm -hmm. uh, traffic through, through paid channels like Facebook and Google, you have to be resourceful. Absolutely. And two great resourceful tips there. Well, let's end our conversation today talking about the concept of an affiliate army to help you dominate your niche. What would you say is an affiliate army? How do you describe that? It's like a, a network of other websites all referring traffic to your store and any sales that come from it, then they would earn a commission. So they're incentivized to send their, their, let's say, their researching people in the buying phase that look around on websites looking for comparison articles and stuff like that. Uh, it's like an, a web of uh, other relevant websites all sending traffic to you. And it's uh, very effective. I feel like the affiliate concept and the affiliate program has also really been in the focus this last 12 to 24 months as influencers have created this, really a position that didn't exist five years ago, I don't think, not in the, not in the social media kind of perspective. There's always been influencers, movie stars, you know, people on television, um, people with fans. There's always been influencers, but I think now, now more than ever, influencer programs are also out there that often utilize an affiliate link or an affiliate program as well. Have you had any experience with influencers using your product or becoming part of an affiliate program with your product? Or do you rely mostly on websites specifically? Yeah. So because the average bike I sell is 5k and up, it would be very expensive for me to experiment with influencers by, because you know, generally you would have to give them the product so then they can create user generated content and, you know, share it with their, so I have done once or twice. Um, but it's very hard to sort of gauge the, the rewards, the ROI on that. So what mm -hmm. I, what I like to do is I like to, um, I, I like to see who's already ranking on page one. Uh, because some, sometimes it's usually the affiliate marketers because as affiliate marketers know, if they don't get content, uh, traffic to their content, they don't have a business, they have a blog. Uh, so they don't, they don't make any sales. And generally their, their business model is get as much traffic as possible, rank very high on page one, and then send that traffic to Amazon and get a commission. 
because that's the that's the the, the most straight line way to make a commission. So what I found was was that I'm a, I'm I'm trying to rank on page one, and I'm competing with other blogs that are writing similar content to mine and then linking to Amazon. So what I like to do is uh, I can also use the Dream 100 for research or I could just run a Google search to identify websites that uh, are, let's say, that are linking to Amazon or another referral program. And then I would just reach out to them and make them an offer to, you know, to join my program instead. And by doing so, uh, Google will generally only give, even if you're really good at SEO and you're able to rank all of your content, Google will generally only dedicate you two places on page one for a, a certain certain search term. So even if I show up in position one and two, there are another eight spots. They could be competitors. They could be affiliates linking to Amazon. So what I do is I try to reach all of those, all of the affiliates, and I, and I recruit them, let's say. And the more I recruit, the more space or real estate I'm occupying on page one. So usually when I when I look for like a search term like e-bikes for hunting or electric hunting bike, I occupy two spaces and then three or four other spaces are affiliates. They they look like unbiased review sites, but they're actually sending me traffic. So indirectly, I can occupy five or six places on page one uh, just by having this affiliate army. Um, talking and writing and discussing about e-bikes and then sending the traffic to me. And then they get a commission. But it's it's well worth it because I get a bunch more traffic and I get sales that otherwise would have went to another program or straight to Amazon. So it's um it's a very it's a very cost effective way to get extra traffic and 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 in turn and then indirectly very relevant backlinks, which again help me to rank even higher because they're e-bike or hunting specific websites start linking to me, which gives me credibility. And uh, so we, it, it's usually a very effective way to get, to get more traffic. And that's the goal. What's interesting is also based on what you shared regarding the price point of your product being a high end, you know, $5,000 or higher product. I also think the way that you're doing this, the way like you're building the affiliate army and, you know, being able to be represented in multiple places on page one also lends itself to giving buyers a very high perception of your product, give your buyers confidence to purchase your product as opposed to others. Because especially if they're seeing reviews or conversations about your brand on their websites, it not only, you know, makes them feel comfortable, gives them that confidence, but it makes them feel as though their decision to purchase your product is supported by other people. So I feel like you're getting um, so many other positive outcomes from this tactic that you're sharing with us. Yeah, it does help a lot because I can tell that, well, people will land on my website, read my content and like it, but maybe they feel like it's such an expensive purchase. Maybe they need to continue their research. And then yes. they'll go on to maybe position two or position three and read one of my affiliates, which will recommend the same products and then link back to me. Yes. And then they could do that a few times and then they always end up back. <laughs> back I love this. I so love this. Uh, you know, people like to feel like they have options, right? Yeah. Um, but at the same time, sometimes people just think that they have to have options because it's almost like we don't we don't as human nature, we don't want to like second guess ourselves. We want to always feel like we did the research, but ultimately yeah. we always feel good when the first choice we we picked is supported by other places. We're like, ah, see, I knew this was the best choice. I just had to double check. So I think that that plays into like the human psyche and, and the things that we think about when we're going to make a big purchase as well. So again, win-win all across the board. This has been such yeah, an yeah. interesting conversation. Yeah, yeah, it's great. I, I, I love talking about this stuff. This, I can geek out on this all day. <laughs> I love that. And you know what? Uh, the proof is in the pudding. You were, you know, happily making your six figures and now you had, you know, seven figures, you know, come, come across in your brand world and, and with your e-bike brand. And you've also helped other people with their SEO questions and help them um, understand this process a little bit more and understand that it's not just paid ads. It's not just all these things that we're kind of 
being conditioned to think we have to do, there are better ways to do it. And there are better ways to get that organic traffic. So as we wrap up our talk, I want to share the website that you offer this course um, on. But before I do that, are there any final thoughts you'd like to share to wrap up our conversation? No, I would just like to get the message across that. Um, so I'm I'm kind of an SEO geek. So like when you say, uh, when you're a hammer, all you see are nails. My solution usually is uh, SEO. Well, SEO isn't the only solution. There are paid channels, there's social media, but people shouldn't sleep on SEO just because uh, Facebook ads is giving a return or Google uh, shopping is giving a return. By adding SEO, it's something that will compound over time and give a lot of rewards long term and it creates higher value for the business as well if you're able to diversify your, traf your traffic that way and you're not completely reliant on one or two uh, pay to play sort of uh, channels. So. Uh, even if even if people don't go crazy into SEO, they should at least start looking at ways to get some organic traffic because it will just benefit the business uh, overall uh, in the long term. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for sharing all of this incredible information and all of your insights, not only on SEO, but ways to really help e-commerce brands really take control over some of the traffic that is coming to their pages, their stores. If you're a Shopify store owner, I think you can definitely put into effect many of the things that you shared, John. So for those who are interested in learning more, I do want to connect them with you, John. And we'll do that a couple different ways. If you are watching on the video show, I'm going to pop up a bunch of links and email addresses. If you're listening on the podcast, I'll share them as well. And I'll spell things out so it's easy for you to connect with John. Let me first just start off by sharing John's email. He's been so kind to share his email with you. Always use respect and do diligence and be, as I mentioned, respectful when emailing any of our guests and also let them know that you heard them on the Engage podcast. You guys can email John at john, J-O-H-N, at ecomseoformula.com. That's E-C-O-M-S-E-O. F O R M U L A dot com, John at ecom SEO formula dot com. But let's talk about what our audience can find when they go to the website that you've set up for your course. It's www.ecom SEO formula dot com. What can our audience find there? Because I think you've set this up very nicely to not only offer some free options and free knowledge, but also a chance for them to learn a lot as well. Yeah, well, so on at that website, that's basically the like a standard landing page. Uh, so I, I'm a Shopify guy, so uh, I don't normally make courses and create landing pages. So I've done my best at creating a very straightforward landing page with that introduces all of the content that's in the course, and there is a, there's a bonus video that you can uh, that you can get and you could take action. The bonus video is called How to Scale in 90 Days. It's actually my concept that I learned from another coach of mine on how to focus on uh, three core KPIs, how to increase all of them slightly incrementally because the compound effect results in a lot of higher revenue. Uh, and that video is free on the landing page. And, and then the Excel file that I use to go through this, the process is also an available uh, downloadable resource on the landing page. And that's, that's what they will find if they go there. Fantastic. And you can also connect with John on LinkedIn as well. You can search him, John-Murphy, M-U-R-P-H-Y. And when you do search for John, you can look for his black and kind of hunter green banner that says e-bike generation and he is the CEO at eBike Generation in Wilmington, Delaware. So when you search for him, I'm sure there's a lot of John Murphys. John, by the way, I'm waiting for you to accept my request because when we publish your podcast in a couple of weeks, I want to tag you. So sure. make sure if you also connect with John that you leave him a note and let him know that you heard him on the Engage podcast. All right, John, this has been a really insightful and, uh, and informative conversation. I really love how you laid out your talking points today. You made, you made, I think, the basic fundamentals of what has worked for you very easy for somebody else to understand. And as you mentioned, a lot of people are coming to you 
they just don't understand how to get organic traffic. So I think, uh, like you said, maybe they have other ways to do it, paid paid ads, social media influencers. But like you said, they shouldn't just wait on this because this, if, if it's done correctly, maybe with your guidance and with help, um, it sounds like it can be a, a home run. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely don't sleep on SEO. Awesome. Well, John, thank you so much for your time today. Next time I'm in Italy, I hope sometime next year, I'm going to come meet you. We'll go for a little gelato and have ourselves a ball. Thanks, Marissa. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Congrats on all of your success and all the success you'll have in the future, I know for sure. Have a great day. What an awesome show today, you guys. I'm telling you, we have the best guests on our podcast. And whether you're a Shopify store owner, you know, maybe a different type of e-commerce business owner, maybe you're an app developer. I mean, I hear I hear like an opportunity to develop an app in, in our conversation today. Maybe you can develop an app to help people you know, get onto the Google page, some sort of app that helps with the algorithm or helps find the keywords so it can make the research easier. I don't know. There's so many awesome guests that come through our podcast and John Murphy is just yet another home run this year on the Engage Digital Marketing for Shopify Ask the Experts podcast. Please connect with John. Let him know you heard the podcast. Express your appreciation for his insights. And of course, if you have questions that you'd like to follow up, and to ask John, you can do that as well. Speaking of questions or following up, I'm your host, Marissa Morgan. You guys can find me on LinkedIn as well. You can search Marissa Morgan, one R, two S's. And my link is linkedin.com forward slash I N forward slash the Marissa Morgan. Or you can email me at marissa.m at N-G-A-G-G-E. If you have any questions about the show or maybe you're a Shopify owner or app developer or agency and you'd like to be on the show and share your insights, we'd love to have you as a guest. In the meantime, take a moment, check out the Engage Shopify messaging app that is available at N-G-A-G-G-E dot com. That's Engage. Check, take it for a test drive. We're offering a 30-day free trial with 500 free messages. If you're not using SMS right now, you are missing out on loads of business and the opportunity to connect and build a beautiful community of your customers and your prospects. So check us out, Engage.com. And on behalf of myself and the entire team at Engage, I want to thank you for tuning in for today's show with John Murphy, the CEO of eBike Generation. I hope to see you back here for our next show very, very soon. Have a great day, everybody. <music>